So one of the challenges to um, having a good presence online is having also a good visual presence, meaning finding a cool theme. I was just browsing around a little bit and I saw this one that I really like. Um, I'm going to explore it some more, but I like one that I searched simply inside of WordPress and it's called The Shop. And I like it. It seems to have a lot of cool features for free. So I still haven't found the catch yet. There's probably a catch. But what I'm see from what I'm seeing, I really like it. Probably the catch is that so do a thousand other people like it, and then my shop will look the same. So let's talk then a little bit about uh, child themes. Because what's happening here is we choose a, a theme, we activate it, we customize it, and depending how we customize it, then we could get into trouble when we update the theme. If we edit simply the customize, if we edit via <coughs> the customize button, that's not a big deal. When we go into customize, what's happening there is it's saving into the database all of these things that we're changing. But when you get to level 2 or level 3 of doing this stuff, this is not enough at a certain point. I don't see anywhere where I can change, you know, I can change homepage sections, sections content. I can change this to make it say these different things like latest product, visit our store and such. I can change that. I saw it somewhere else over here, header area, promo boxes right here. Um, I've got these built-in icons and boxes and it gives me the way to change it. I can set different icons here, go check here for all the icons, and I can change the text. I can do that, but I don't see any way for me to manually add my own icon that I invented. It, it does give me a list in this theme of like, I don't know, 500 icons to choose from and I'll probably find the perfect one. But what if I have my own icon developed? It's, it's not on that list. So there's no way here that it gives me, that it allows me to do exactly what I wanted. Notice here, notice here it did select the actual possible 500 of these icons. There's a LinkedIn icon and all of this and that and stars and all of that. But I want my own icon. It doesn't give me that ability. So that's when we get into this issue that I'm, that I'm getting at about I then would need to go into the appearance and the editor. And that's a big topic. We don't have time to talk about that. It's a big concept. What I do want to talk about is anything that you do in this editor most likely will be lost when you do the theme update. Right now I've got theme version 1.4. And a few months later they release 1.5 for security, security enhancements. And if I click that update, I might lose my customization that I did here under editor. Not this customize here, as I said, that gets saved into the database that's safe. This is not getting saved to the database, really. It's getting saved to these files, all of these raw code files. And when I'm in the updater and I select to update the theme, it's going to give me the latest version of all these files, the latest, most secure versions. And therefore, it will erase everything that I did, customized. Nowadays, I believe it even tells you when you're in that update screen, and if you have a theme to update and you update it, it, it I believe it now tells you. Be careful here, this will erase your customization. Work with child themes. That's what we're going to talk about. Is there a way to get warned? That your changes are no longer because No. The, it, it'll give you a warning right before you're about to update, and it's such a small little thing you might not even notice it. But it tries to give you a warning before you update it, and then after you do it, it's, it's done. So unless you made a backup of these files somewhere, like maybe Duplicator, then um, it's gone. Can you do wait on your CSS for those files? No, because still, if I go into this editor, 
it says, okay, here's your style CSS file. And we can do imports, at imports, but again, whatever we do to this file will get erased because it'll give me the latest version of this file. So we can't exactly do those imports here because it still goes away. So here's the way we fix it. Well, I was thinking more in terms of the quickness of the integration, applying a change to the current version, and then only using what they added an external file. There is a way to do that, and that's what we're getting at, but unfortunately it's not easy. So here's what we're getting at. Let's do this. Go online and search WordPress child theme. Search WordPress child theme. Hopefully your number one result is from WordPress <coughs> Codex. WordPress Codex, which is WordPress's official manual on how everything about WordPress works. They call it the Codex. It's, it's their manual how WordPress works. So here I did a search. Top result. Child themes at the WordPress Codex. That's what we want to look at. Go ahead and click that link. I'm going to get an article. A technical, techie article, because this is advanced, what we're going to talk about. Um, this, is, this is pretty advanced, but I'm seeing more and more often themes are starting to include a child theme, so that you work on the child theme, do whatever you want with the child theme, which is attached to the parent, and once you do an update, the parent gets updated and all your changes are intact. That's the whole purpose of child themes you will be able to customize your CSS and your HTML and JavaScript and everything in the child theme. When you do the update, your child theme is not touched. The parent theme is touched, and all of those changes basically trickle down to your child and don't affect the child theme, what you did customized. Question? Okay, so you're saying that whenever they put out an update, those updates will never be to the child theme, it's always going to be to the parent? Because yeah, I've noticed that. I haven't understood what's going on. Yeah, it, it does it for the parent, and then it does trickle down and apply to your child pages, your child theme, but it doesn't... Through the parent. Through the parent. And it doesn't change your code. It doesn't, it doesn't alter your code, but it okay, does apply the updates. Because it's just like you created your own child theme. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry, you mentioned that you're seeing more and more themes include child theme. Mm -hmm. But if they don't include child themes, you can still have a child theme. Yes. We, uh, we always have the ability to create our own child themes, which is what this details. But if you get a particular theme that they did the hard work and made your child theme, great, use it. Because that's what's going to protect all your customized changes, your level 2 and your level 3 mm -hmm. of things. So a child theme, and notice it's multilingual, so you can get it in all the languages, so you can fully understand it, because this is complicated. A child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality and styling of another theme, called a parent theme. Child themes are the recommended way of modifying an existing theme. So yes, you can go to your customize and be safe behind there and make any changes <coughs> and do updates. You should be okay. But once you pull back the curtain and do something that the theme author never let you do easily, not that you can't do it, you can edit any WordPress theme, but they didn't let you do it easily because they didn't want you to break your whole site. They gave you a customize option here, and this particular theme has got a lot of them, but it doesn't have some of the ones I need, like change the background color behind that icon. They didn't allow me to do that through a simple button, but I can do it in code, no problem. My changes, though, need to be protected via child themes. And that's how WordPress themselves tell you is the best way to customize, to modify. Why would you do this? These are the reasons. If you modify a theme directly and it's updated, you'll, then your modifications may be lost. By using a child theme, you will ensure that your modifications are preserved. I don't like that. May be lost. Most likely they will be lost. So it is, you want them preserved in a child. Using a child theme can speed up development, don't worry about that. Using a child theme is a great way to learn about WordPress, you know, whatever. I want a good website. I don't want to learn WordPress, I want a website. So the number one 
bullet point is that one. Your changes, your custom changes will be preserved. How to create it. Honestly, we're not going to do it together step by step. It is very technical. Um, they change it once in a while. There used to be a slightly different way to do this, and now there's a newer way to do it. So if I teach it now, they're going to change it eventually, probably. I'm going to go through those various steps here. We won't exa actually do it. It's not really brain surgery. It is a few steps, and you have to pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> but if we do it on a testing environment, no big loss, especially if you've got a duplicator backup. Um, most of you are not going to go anyway into the code editor. So again, I'm not going to show the full way to do this because not everyone is going to even go into the code. That's a big can of worms. But here's the overview. In your folder of your site, you're going to have, we can do this, go back to the WAMP folder. Open computer again, open local disk, open WAMP, open www. Our current site is that folder with the date. Open that folder. And then you've got all of this structure. And one of the folders is called WP Content. Open up WP Content. And there's a folder for everything about your site. All plugins are there, all themes are there, everything that you've uploaded is there. Open themes. And here is a list of the currently installed themes. Hotel, Omega, Shopsistic, The Shop, and 2015. So all themes that are installed are right there. Imagine, um, you know, this is on a real server on GoDaddy or whatever. I would use the GoDaddy file manager and I can still get into this folder. This is behind the scenes of behind the scenes. This is even more behind the editor in the WordPress view. This is like the deepest level. The point of that is that the instructions say, you've got all of these themes. To create a child theme, you need to create a folder and name it whatever you want, dash child. So in this example, there's the 2015 theme installed. Somehow, <coughs> somehow you need to create a folder and call it 2015-child. And I'm saying somehow because you don't, you cannot do that from within WordPress. You're in WordPress, you can't make folders in the server. We're in the server by looking in the folder there, and in there I can make folders. It's saying you need a folder, and inside of it you need some files. A style.css file and functions.php. Basically, these files load the content of the parent. The parent files get updated every once in a while, and it's there available. And then the child theme takes what it needs from the parent files, because the parent files there are like it's 200 of them, <clears throat> depending on the complexity of your theme. And the child theme needs these other files to, to further work and not conflict with updates. So it goes on to say, you need a folder or a directory. You need these files in there add child to it. Then you need to edit some code of the style sheet file. You need to write some code here that says, you know, basically you copy and paste this and fill it in. The theme is called whatever. 2015 child. It can be called whatever you want. What's the address to it online? Well, it's victor.com slash, you know, the name of my theme. Description, whatever I want. This is a child <coughs> theme of my project. Whatever. <coughs> Who's the author? You. What's your address? Your address. Very important there. This is based on the template 2015. So in the folder, I've got all of these themes. I've got the child theme, and its parent is called 2015. That name of that folder is what is typed right here. The folder is 2015. If the name of the theme, like in our case, 
I've got a theme called Hotel Omega, etc. In my code, I would I would write here <coughs> template Omega. The parent of this child theme is Omega. It's the name of the folder in the themes folder. You can put a version number, you can make it up, you can put a license or leave that. Where's the license? Address, tags. So basically you just copy and paste this in. Oh, and then here too, your text domain. This is the name. Actually, that one always confuses me. The text domain is the name of your current theme. Text domain defined in load child theme text domain should be used to translate all strings in the child theme. Use load child theme text domain in functions during their after setup. Yep, this is you know very nerdy written for nerds. So that would be the same uh, name as your child theme, basically. You will need to replace the example text. The template line corresponds to the directory of the theme. The only required child theme is style, but functions is necessary to NQ styles. Explained below. Goes on to details. In your actual, in your actual um, functions PHP file, you need to copy and paste this line of code and point it to your parent one, your parent style. Actually, this one doesn't need any edits. Then you do something very similar there, so then more information. So you see, this is what you would need to do if you are going to fully customize your code so that it's protected, but it's complicated. So you have those trade-offs. You have those trade-offs. You're either going to use the site as is, as how they allow you, as best as possible, or go through the extra steps of customizing, which you can see are a little complicated. Question? Um, you may not know behind the scenes what's happening, but I'm just wondering if you get these bunch of PHP in different styles filed in the theme, in the child theme, and does that get initially copied down from the parent into the child? Basically, yes. Yeah. The, so in the other function. words, the, the parent will get updated, and you've got this child stuff which has not been touched, and then does the child stuff get written right back up in the thing? It gets written visually to the user, yes. Technically, it doesn't get written back to the parent. The child code stays in the child theme. But what's happening through this function is that it's taking the parent code and bringing it into the child and then writing that, displaying that on the screen to the user. So essentially, the, the WordPress theme may actually point down into your child theme to get the changed information. It will point down and pull up the information from the child theme rather than the theme itself. Yeah, that, and that's what this bit of code is here saying. It's, it seems so deceptive and simple, but that's basically what that's saying right there. The template of this child is something called 2015. So yes, it is going back and pulling the parent info into the child info. It's kind of backwards. It's the child pulling <coughs> it from the parent. It's not the parent sending it to the child. It's the child pulling it from the parent. So when we do those updates to the parent, the latest code goes down to the child and leaves alone what we edited in the child theme. Oh, so even with the child theme, when we move behind the code editing, it, we're still editing the main theme and then it just gets transferred? Oh, no, no, no. We're editing the child theme. We're only editing the child theme. We're only ever touching the child theme code. And it behind the scenes then pulls in the parent code is that into us. When we go to edit it, does it automatically go to the child theme code if it exists? In other words, if we don't have the child theme, we're going to edit the theme code. Yeah, and that's we what it's. Yeah, you see here when we click on edit, and then on the top right says which theme are you going to edit? The parent, which won't say parent, but that's the parent or child, and it'll say child. So yes, you you will be then editing so the correct. If you forget to select the child over there, you're in trouble because you have yeah. the parent. Yeah, but it is automatic to some degree because. Once you set this up and you go to themes, you will have 
the shah, and you'll say the shah child. So once you activate shah child, then you shouldn't have any trouble remembering, because it'll do it for you, that you're editing the child code. But you have to remember to activate the child theme. We have to, as we follow along in the instructions, it says create this folder, edit that code, and then somewhere here it says go back to themes, and then activate the child theme. And from then on out, we're going to be working with the child code without affecting the parent code. How long has this feature existed? I think a while. I don't know exactly what version. It works since at least version 3. We're on version 4.4 now. Most likely probably version 2 and even older, maybe. It's been a while, but it is complicated. That's why sometimes it doesn't come up a lot. But most of us that don't have a lot of code experience, well, we just go into customize and tweak it how we want and we get a good result. But those of us that want you know, the most customized result, we have to do code editing. And the thing about that is, there's another third possibility. I could do the code editing, but just never update my parent theme. That'll always keep my, my code intact. I didn't choose child themes. I'm editing my parent code, and then I'll never edit my parent code. I mean, I'll never update my parent code. And that could be a security liability. What so. do you think about if you just copy whatever you have in the editor, update, and then paste into the editor once again. Is that poor practice? No, no, that's perfectly fine. So that's another way that we can do this. Right here, I can select all of this code and copy it and take it out of here and put it into some other code editor, like Notepad++. So here, I've copied all of my code out of WordPress, and I'm going to save it somewhere. And then I go into the updates and I update it, and everything gets updated and it erases all of my updates. But no worries, I have it saved over here in another place, so I just copy and paste it back in. Because most likely, what's being updated are some of these PHP files, the actual you know, part of the code that could be damaging. CSS code usually is not the, the place where something gets hacked at. It's usually PHP code, HTML, or, or JavaScript. So it is a way to do it. Back up this code manually somewhere do your update, put it back in, and it may work. It's not poor practice, but it's it's kind of cumbersome, and sometimes it doesn't always work perfectly. So you're saying so a child probably or? Yeah. But it's just that this initial setup can be a killer. Right. But then after that, it, it works. That's the recommended way. It says right on the top of the official WordPress.org, recommended way. So the recommended way should work. And in, uh, in my experience, it's, it's always been the best way there with the child theme. I'm sorry, where are we going to do the PHP file? That's going to be here how it's saying. You need to have inside your child folder style.css and functions.php. That's where you're putting in this PHP code that the tutorial tells you to put. This up here is in the CSS file, and then this further down here is in the PHP file. So that's why I'm showing this. It is complicated. I'm not going to have us all do it right now because a lot of us are not even going to do this. A few of us have some experience or the inclination to actually get this deep and complicated. So this is as far as I'll really talk about it. We won't do it because that's you know even more complicated. But any questions before we move on? Yes? No. So child themes are useful. They do need some setup. You set them up the first time, and they should work after that. So and it, saying if one of your customers wants extreme customization, you definitely use child themes. Yes. And if this is very wordy and dry, you can always do this. YouTube.com, <laughs> how to create a child theme. So if you haven't thought about YouTube as a great place to learn stuff, you should. People put out great tutorials out here. Not only great tutorials on how to, you know, set up your site and all of that, but you know, alligator bite photos and Superman photo uh, videos. So you also can learn stuff here. How to set up a WordPress child theme. And you're gonna get lots of results. I got forty-eight thousand results. How do I know the good ones? 
uh, again, you're going to look at how many views. More views probably means more popular and better. How old is it, that two-year-old one? Don't even look at that. That's showing you the old way to do it. This eight-month one, that should be more current. One-year-old, um, maybe. Ten months ago? Three years ago? No, nope, don't look at those old ones. Eleven months ago and such. <coughs> So this one about eight months ago. So you were looking at the, the CSS. You need a website. Exactly. So this one's um, 14,000 views, 389 thumbs up. This is how you figure out what's a good tutorial. Just like you get these opinions about themes, and you get opinions on Yelp, on a restaurant, you get opinions on tutorials. This one seems to sound good. I'd also look at the comments and hopefully they're, you know, on on topic. And this one says, yeah, do it in four minutes. So maybe also look at the comments because they might say, we've got a new version of this for the latest WordPress 4.4. So always look at this in detail. 